Good evening. Leading the news this Monday, the stock market surprised the experts by closing up 34 points. The Supreme Court said the government was not responsible for Nevada nuclear test deaths and injuries, and the Soviets announced they will participate in the 1988 Olympic Games in South Korea. We'll add the details in our news summary in a moment. Robin? After the news summary, with another former administration aide on trial, we look at ethics in Reagan's Washington. Former White House Communications Director Pat Buchanan debates Democratic consultant Ann Lewis. Then is computerized trading the monster that caused the Wall Street crash? Business correspondent Paul Salmon explains how computer trading works. Then we discuss its impact with Arthur Levitt, chairman of the American Stock Exchange, and Leo Malamud, chairman of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Finally, a Roger Mudd essay. Vice President Bush and the Iran-Contra affair remained in the news today. Mr. Bush spoke under oath to representatives of the Iran-Contra special prosecutor in Washington. Afterwards, the vice president's spokesman said he answered all questions completely and fully. Mr. Bush said last week he had been told he was not a target of the investigation and the question and answer session was to be informational only. On the way to his Cleveland speech, President Reagan was asked about Mr. Bush's Iran-Contra role. Tell everything he knows about Iran-Contra. Everybody knows everything about Iran-Contra. One of Mr. Reagan's former top aides went on trial today in Washington. Len Nossinger is charged with four counts of ethics law violations for his lobbying activities after leaving the White House. Nossinger, a longtime friend and political associate of Mr. Reagan's, was White House political director at the beginning of the Reagan administration. Before jury selection began this morning, Nofziger spoke to reporters outside the courthouse. I'm innocent of, uh, of anything, and so I assume that a jury, being uh, a typical fair American jury, will find that to be the case. Are you going to testify? That's up to my life. What do you think is going yet? I think we're going to win this thing. A number of current and former administration officials are expected to testify at the trial. They include Attorney General Edwin Meese, Defense Secretary Frank Carlucci, Energy Secretary John Harrington, and former Transportation Secretary Elizabeth Dole. Israeli troops shot dead three Palestinians on the Gaza Strip today, raising the number killed by the army in recent disturbances in the occupied territories to 34. On the West Bank, two Jewish civilian settlers shot dead a Palestinian teenager and wounded another when they opened fire at a crowd that attacked their car. More troops moved into the occupied territories today following a cabinet approval of a get-tough policy. Curfews were imposed on refugee camps after disturbances. On the West Bank, there were more arrests of young Arab protesters, leading to a confrontation between Israeli troops and a group of Palestinian women. Authorities also detained two Palestinian journalists and ordered them held without trial for six months. There were two stories from Moscow today. The official Communist Party newspaper Pravda reported Soviet troops could begin to leave Afghanistan by May 1st. It said that was possible if UN-sponsored negotiations led to an agreement by the 1st of March. And the Soviets are returning to the Olympic Games. The news agency TASS said the Soviet Union will participate in the 1988 Summer Olympics in Seoul, South Korea. It will be the first time in 12 years that U.S. and Soviet athletes have faced off in the Summer Games. In 1980, the U.S. boycotted the Olympics in Moscow because of Afghanistan. In 1984, the Soviets stayed away from the Los Angeles Games, citing lack of security. West German police today reported the first arrest in the two-year-old disco bombing that provoked the U.S. air raids on Libya. Police arrested a 27-year-old woman, Christine Endrichkeit, in the Baltic port of Lübeck on suspicion of planting the bomb at a West Berlin discotheque in April 1986. Two American soldiers and a Turkish woman were killed and more than 200 people injured. The U.S. later accused Libya of orchestrating the attack and sent planes to bomb Libyan cities. German authorities said today's arrest pointed to a Syrian connection, but the State Department said the U.S. had clear evidence of Libyan culpability. As a result, the U.S. announced today an extension of economic sanctions against Libya, citing its role in international terrorism. In France, the trial of 19 suspected terrorists opened today. The defendants were believed to be members of Action Direct, a group linked to assassination of government officials and business executives. 
Michael McKay of the BBC has a report. The French press are calling it the fortress, and for days the Palace of Justice has been bristling with security for a trial which underlines the success of the tough stand taken by the French government over internal terrorism. Nineteen men and women are accused of plotting to conduct a campaign of terror which dates back to 1979. When Action Direct murdered George Best, the boss of Renault, two years ago, it was virtually the final chapter in their story. The killings, which included that of British businessman Kenneth Marston and the 90 or so bombings, effectively came to an end last February. The power of Action Direct was, say the police, broken when they captured four of the ringleaders in a remote farmhouse. The security precautions which went on even as the court was in session signified more the threat Action Direct once represented. There was talk of close links with the West German Red Army faction and international terrorist cooperation. But the small French movement allegedly led by Jean-Marc Ruillon and a handful of his friends never enjoyed the support of a significant part of French.